Well, hopefully you enjoyed the first chapter. And if you're still with us, here comes chapter two. So chapter two is about variables and data types. First, what is a variable? It's like a container that holds information. In Python, you can create a variable simply by assigning it a value using the equal sign. That's the assignment operator. Python automatically determines the type of the data stored in the variable. So you don't need to specify it explicitly like you do with some languages. So I'm going to give you some examples. Now all I've done is opened idle. I'm in the shell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file and I'm going to open a file. I'm just going to open my hello world file. So there's my hello world file. We left it in a bit of a mess last time, but that's okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything in here. And I'm going to save this as, and I'm just going to call it chapter two. Now I already have a file in here called chapter two. So I'm just going to save it as chapter two and say yes to overwrite it. And now I have a blank file. So let's look at these assignments. The first one that you're going to see is the name. I'm going to do it lowercase because our convention is to do it lowercase. Name equals Alice. So what that does is it assigns a string variable. Name is assigned the value of Alice that's in quotes because it's a string. Next, I'm going to assign an integer, which is age, and the age is 25. Now, I'm not going to put the number in quotes because it's a number. It's, a, it's an integer, 25. So it doesn't have to be in quotes because it's not a string. And then this last one that I'm going to show you is underscore student equals true is what we call a boolean so that is a variable that can either be true or false and we use those and we'll see that in an example in a bit but we use those a lot of times in programming so the variable holding the name or holding alice is called name and it's a string variable the variable called age has a value of 25 and it's an integer variable. The, val the variable called is underscore student equals true, so it holds a value of true. That is a Boolean variable. Now, a couple of things about variables that we need to know. The variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. They can't contain spaces or special characters. Python is case sensitive so age with an uppercase a is different to age with a lowercase a and it's recommended that you use meaningful names in your variables like user underscore age instead of x that helps you to keep clarity in your code when you come to look at it that you'll know that user underscore age is the age of the user rather than x being the age of the user now, by convention, the variable name should be written in lowercase with words separated by underscores, what they call snake case. So like that is underscore student. That's a good way to name your variables. So as far as numbers are concerned, Python supports two main types of numbers, integers, which are whole numbers like five or minus 42. So integers can be negative and positive but they don't have any decimal point. So there's nothing after the decimal point. And then floats. Floats are numbers with a decimal point, something like 3.14 or minus 0 0.01. Those would be floats. So in our example in the book, we have x equals 10 and we have pi equals 3.141. Five, nine.
So that's an example where x is an integer and pi is a float. So we can perform basic arithmetic operations with those numbers. So for instance, I can say now sum, which is another variable, equals x plus pi. Product equals x times 2. Division equals x divided by 3. So now we can print those values out. We can take a look and see what they look like in the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print. Let me go into brackets. I'm going to print sum. And then I'm going to print product. And then I'm going to print division. And then if we run that program, I go run, say OK, then we can see that our sum of x plus 5 is 15 because x was 10 and we added 5 to it. The product is x times 2, so that's 10 times 2 is 20. And then division is x divided by 3, so that's 10 divided by 3. 3.3333 and that is the program running now one thing to note is that the program just basically is running down the list here so it did tell it did create a variable called name with a value of alice and age with a value of 25 and is student with a value of true and we can test that so I say print name, print age, and print is underscore, underscore student. And then if we run that again, remember I can press F5 to run that. I'll say OK to save it. And there we see Alice, the 25, and the true. So we can see that our variables are getting set to the values that we're setting. Okay, now I'm going to delete all of that because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to look at some string information. So... Strings are sequences of characters enclosed in single or double quotes. And you can store words, sentences, or even numbers in a string if you want to. And the way it works, same syntax. So message equals hello world. And we can concatenate strings as well. So with concatenation, that means joining two strings together. So we can say greeting equals hello. Then the concatenation character is a plus. And we're going to put a space between the two. And another plus. And we're going to put Alice in there. And then we're just going to simply print greeting. So we concatenated those strings, those characters, into the variable greeting. And then we're just printing greeting. So I'm going to just show you that. Hello, Alice. Now, what happened to the hello world? We never printed it. We never printed message. So we're, I'm going to do that too. Print message. And then we'll just run that. And then you can see the hello world is set in the variable too. 
finally, we can do repetition. So repetition is an interesting one. We say echo equals, because of the time of year, I'm going to say ho times three. And if I say print echo, and we run that program, you can see it says ho, ho, ho. Now, one of the important aspects with Python is string formatting. And we format strings with the F string. And in Python, F strings, formatted string literals allow you to embed variables or expressions directly inside strings. So you start an F string with an F before the opening quote. And then you can include variables inside curly braces. So let's try that. I'm going to just delete this stuff because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to say name equals Alice. Age equals 25. We don't need the quotes on that one because it's a, an integer. Then I'm going to say print. And here comes the F. So F. So that F is outside of the, the quotes. Then hello. My name is, now curly braces, name. And I am curly braces, age, years old. And remember to close the quotes. Now if I run that program, you can see it says, hello, my name is Alice and I'm 25 years old. So the formatting is a very powerful way to include variables at the appropriate time in a string. So why use F strings? F strings work because they provide clarity. It's a clear and concise way to combine text and variables. And readability, it's easier to read than concatenating strings using a plus. And efficiency is faster and cleaner than older string formatting methods. So Python provides powerful ways to format strings. And there's another one, it's called multi-line strings. And to work with multi-line text, you use triple quotes. And I'll show you that one next. <clears throat> I'm just going to delete that. And we'll go long underscore message. And this is in the book. If you have the book and you're following it along. Three double quotes. This is a multi-line string. It stands several lines and then you've got to close it with three quotes and then what we're going to do is we're just going to print long underscore message so remember to think about what you think is going to happen here and then we're going to run it and you can see what actually happens There's our string, multi-lines, printed out. So that works pretty well for a multi-line string. So you should try it yourself. You should modify the name and age variables in the code above and print different messages and, and try different things and see how you can work with them. Let's talk a little bit about Booleans. So a Boolean is a data type with two possible values. It's either true or false. And Booleans are often used in decision making, which we're going to cover later in control flow in another chapter. But an example of a Boolean is, is raining. I'm going to just delete this and show you the example. Is underscore raining. 
equals false. As underscore umbrella equals true. And you can see in idle it actually changes the color of false and true because they're keywords. And then we have Boolean operations. So Booleans are commonly used with comparison operators to evaluate conditions. So if we said A equals 10, B equals 20, and then we say print, and we say A greater than B. So that would evaluate to, oh, we got greater than, it's important that you get syntax right or it's not gonna work. So that would evaluate, is A greater than B? So that should be false. And then if I say print A less than B, that should evaluate to true. So when we run this program, we should expect to see false and then true. So let's see what we get. Oh, now we have an, an error. So name A is not defined. So I've made a mistake here. So let's go back and check it out. The mistake is instead of putting an equals, I put a minus in there. And there, I hit the wrong key. So don't panic if you get an error like that. It's actually a good thing. You can usually see where the problem is. Then we're going to run it again. And now we get false and true. So if we put that alongside our evaluation, print A greater than B. So A greater than B. So is 10 greater than 20? No, false. Is A less than 20? 10 less than 20? True. So that is our Boolean operation. So wrapping up in this chapter, we explored variables and how to use them, store information. The different types of data in Python, numbers, strings, and booleans, and basic operations you can perform with those data types. The next steps is just to take some time to practice creating and using variables. Modify the examples in this chapter to test your understanding. The more you experiment, the more comfortable you'll become with the Python basics, and the easier it's going to be for you to start creating some programs. Now, what we're going to do in the next chapter, we're going to look at understanding some data structures. So we're gonna look at lists and tuples and dictionaries and other things like that so that you can get an understanding of those. So if you enjoyed this chapter, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and do leave us a comment. Let us know if you've enjoyed it, if there's anything you'd like to see, if there's anything that confused you that you'd like us to cover, absolutely leave us a comment and we'll take care of it. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your subscription. Uh, as you know, we have a, have a Patreon and a coffee page. If you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so. And I will see you in the next one.